Hello, I'm Father James Hagel from St. Gabriel Parish in Chestermere, and I'd like to share with you my reflection for today. Our reading comes from the Gospel of Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, Why are you, what are you discussing with each other while you walk alone? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know these things that have taken place there these many days? He said to them, What things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they indeed seen a vision of angels who said to them that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that Christ should be suffered these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them things about himself in all the scriptures. And as they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he we went in and stayed with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. These were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. I remember growing up that there was a rye field that in the rye itself had grown taller than my dad, and he was six foot two, on a little field that was next to the yard one year. We had a tiny 6601 John Deere combine at the time, and even though Dad had made the smallest swaths possible, our combine just wasn't big enough for that much straw. After three days of making very little progress, I was surprised to see our neighbor jump out of the drain truck early on the third day. They had seen Dad struggling and brought their larger 9500 combine to help Dad finish the field. Farmer etiquette meant that Dad couldn't ask for help, but he was extremely grateful that our neighbor had come to help. What was going to take him over a week was now done in less than a day. I tell this story because I think the hardest thing for me to say at this time is I need. I'm very willing to help someone else out, to drop what I'm doing to help. But to take the time to think about what I need, or to have the courage to admit that I can't do it myself and I need someone else, is far harder to do. I think the same phenomenon can be seen in today's Gospel story, where the two disciples don't know how to ask that they need Jesus, even though he's walking right there beside him. They're going through their own crisis. Jesus on whom they had placed their hope, had died on Passover. 
and now they couldn't even admit they needed help. So they're going back home. But Jesus doesn't leave them there. He knows that saying, I need, is impossible sometimes. So instead, he asks them to tell their story. They tell it imperfectly, and it's incomplete as we know, but it's true for them at the time, and that's enough. For us today, I find that answering, how are you, is an actual question rather than a greeting. It lets us tell our story. It might be imperfect, but it is enough. And then you notice that the two disciples know what to do. Words might fail them, but the value of hospitality shines through, and they invite Jesus in. Back to my own childhood story, this is what our neighbor did back home. He saw Dad struggling, and he had the solution. For us today, we can feel overwhelmed, and we don't know where we can help. Sometimes, the help we need to do is right in front of us. For me, God nudges me to think about someone, and every time I've acted on that nudge, the person I call or video chat needed it too. Sometimes, all we need is to do. In our Gospel story, Jesus reaches out in two ways. The first time he reaches out is explaining his resurrection to them, but the disciples don't recognize it immediately. It is only in hindsight that we see Jesus walking there beside us. I'd love to be prophetic and tell you that this or that is Jesus walking amongst us, but the very nature of this example is that it is something we can only see in retrospect. But I can say this, this isn't the first crisis we've been through, and that past can be a teacher for us if we take the time to look back. And secondly, Jesus reveals himself overtly in the breaking of the bread. As Catholics, we see this as alluding to the Eucharist. Every Eucharistic celebration in which we participate is a communion with Jesus. We become closer and closer to the Son of God. Jesus reaches out to us in overt ways, too. Finally, the story ends by the two disciples telling the story of their encounter again to the other disciples. Only this time, the story is with clarity, and it knows the ending just like I can still tell a story about my dad from when I was about 10. Jesus is with us in the journey of life. Sometimes we don't know what to say. We can't say it, or what we say is imperfect. But Jesus journeys with us in hidden ways and in ways that are obvious. And when we act, we too might be Jesus walking with someone in a hidden way or in an obvious way. And through it all, Jesus helps us tell our story. At Christmas time, we talked about Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us. In his resurrection, Jesus makes that name true for each of us.